And while he was in Washington working on his undergraduate thesis, he stumbled on the clue that allowed him to solve the greatest mystery in the history of ethnobotany. He found a peyote specimen in the herbarium with a note attached to it addressed to the late director of the herbarium, Dr. Rose, saying that, I understand your man Safford, employed by the Smithsonian, says that Tewanakotl, flesh of the gods in Nahuatl, is in fact peyote. He's a fool. It's just as the Spanish said, it's a mushroom, and I've seen it used. Well, Schultes knew that Tewanakotl was not peyote, but this clue opened his imagination. Having just jumped off one Greyhound bus from Tulsa because the Studebaker broke down, he jumped on another one from Mexico City. And then he took a train south. And his companion was this engineer, German engineer B.P. Reiko. And on the way south, Schultes discovered two things. First of all, he discovered he'd better improve his Spanish because he turned to a little old native woman beside him and said to her, Senora, cuantos años tiene? Hoping that he had asked her how old she was, but by leaving off the tilde on the enye, he had inadvertently asked her how many assholes she had. Uh, <laughs> she, she, re she, of course, replied, solamente uno, uh, um, um, as, if he might, as if he might have more than one. And then, to his horror, he discovered that B.P. Reiko was an ardent Nazi. So there he was, not a year from the outbreak of Hitler's war, traveling into the mountains of the Mazatec with an ardent Nazi as a companion. But this, then things got even more interesting because there turned out to be another team of explorers seeking the mystery of Tehuanacatl, and this was led by Bernard Bevan, who was Ernst Bevan's brother, who was later in Churchill's cabinet. This was British Secret Service. So in a scenario right out of Indiana Jones, these two teams converge on this small village in the mountains of the Mazatec country. And of course, Schultes was the one who found the mushrooms, the little ones that spring up. And the threat of that mystery was not picked up until after the war, because many of the principals died during the war. And there was a curious banker called Gordon Wasson, married to a Russian. Russians love mushrooms. And they had concocted this theory that somewhere on Earth there were people who worshipped mushrooms. They didn't know where, but somewhere this happened. And Robert Graves, the poet, sent Wasson, Schulte's 1940 paper in American Anthropologist, identifying Tehuanacatl as a mushroom. Wasson contacted Schultes. Wasson then, on Schultes' instruction, made a beeline for Wautla in Mazatec country, and in a famous moment, he became the first outsider actually to ingest the mushrooms in sacred context. He then wrote it up for Life magazine, and you'll see the cover with uh, the discovery of mushrooms that cause strange visions. Well, if that wasn't the understatement of the century. And an editor picked a snappy title, Seeking the Magic Mushrooms, and then the question became, um, uh, what's in these mushrooms? So Schultes and Wasson got hold of about 64 mushrooms, and they sent them to uh, this man, Albert Hoffman, at Sandoz Laboratories. And Albert um, divided the stash into half and fed half to his dog. Uh, nothing happened. So he ate the other half, and something did happen. Uh, his laboratory began to look like Mexico, <laughs> and he feared that he'd be washed away into the whirlwind of color. Now, such an experience might have unnerved an ordinary scientist, but Hoffman was not of that sort. In 1938, he had been working and had successfully synthesized the indole alkaloids from the strange phenomenon called St. Anthony's fire. This is a um, fungal parasite of rye crops that would periodically cause European villages to go mad, people would become crazy, their noses and fingertips would rot and fall off, and it was exactly the vasoconstricting ability of that alkaloid that he was investigating as a potential medicinal drug. And in 1943, he decided on a whim to make the 25th series of indole alkaloid derivatives in this protocol. And as he was doing so, his fingertips got a little bit numb, and then his head began to swirl, and he didn't have any gasoline, so he went home on his bicycle. And it turned out to be the most momentous bicycle ride in history, because the substance that had gone through his skin was nothing less than lysergic acid diethylamide 25, LSD. So on the way home, Dr. Hoffman went on the world's first acid trip. And so he was quite prepared to identify, as he did, psilocybin as the active ingredient of the mushrooms. But then it came time to identify the second of the sacred plants that Schultes had found, Ololuiki, which turned out to be 
a morning glory, which is precisely why in the summer of 1967, florists all over America experienced a run on morning glory varieties known as heavenly gates. And it turns out that the active ingredient in the morning glories was an indole alkaloid, one methyl group away from LSD, which meant that Schultes had in fact discovered LSD in nature uh, four years before Hoffman synthesized it in the lab in the seeds of a humble morning glory uh, long worshipped by the Aztec. Well, all of this came to the attention of Timothy Leary and Richard Albert, who had subscriptions to Life magazine. And the psychedelic gold rush was on. But by this point, of course, Professor Schultes had long gone and come back from the Amazon. 